Okay, so this is the story of probably, well, what I'm saying probably, this is just the biggest gamble of my life uh, by a long way. And if I look a little haggard, it's because I've, I've just spent a lot of time doing some science -y stuff, uh, which I'm, I'll come to you sometime anyway. Uh, yeah, so I just spent $15,000 on a camera and I've got no guarantee that it'll work now. Um, yeah, is, is this an act of supreme stupidity or is it a worthwhile calculated risk? And yeah, so for a long time, I've wanted a high speed camera that I can actually do something sensible with. Uh, so goes way back uh, to these guys, this is a Casio Exalim. This is the first stuff I did high speed video with. And yes, the burn marks are real. <laughs> These are burn marks from sodium uh, explosions. Anyway, so at about 500 lines of resolution, this will do about 300 frames per second, which in its time was bloody good. Um, uh, nowadays, you can sort of get this almost as standard on most cameras, and I think even the iPhone will do it. Anyway. So yeah, about 300 frames per second on that. Then you come up to something a little more modern, like this, this Sony. And this guy will go up to about 1,000 frames per second. Uh, you know, it's up 500-ish lines of resolution. Which is sensible resolution, sensible speed. That's pretty good. So, I mean, you're getting it. You're about 300 frames per second here for 300 bucks. 1,000 frames for 1,000 bucks. <laughs> the camera that... Um, I've just bought goes up to about 20,000 frames per second at the same resolution. So that's sort of getting up for the speed when you start filming bullets and the such like. In fact, you know, even the sort of very upper top end state of the art type cameras are only sort of an order of magnitude better than this. So this is, uh, this is top shelf stuff. Um, so it's a Phantom V611 is the actual camera. And, yeah, so new as far as I can tell, they took in at about fifty, sixty thousand dollars 60000 but, um, you know, you can get them second-hand or refurbished for 25 30 ish that sort of thing, which is... Anyway, so one of these cameras comes up on eBay for about $30,000, and it's like... And then it's relisted about a week later, well, I mean, a couple of weeks later, for about $15,000. Now, that's actually in the possible range um, for, uh, you know, now that I have some very generous sponsors for this channel. Thank you, Patreon. Anyway, um, so uh, now comes the thing. Is, is it worth it? Well, obviously, if, it, if, it, if it's working, yeah, absolutely, no-brainer. The problem is that, so it comes with the thing, you know, um, solar scene, no returns, um, which might make you have serious pause for thought. You know, this is not something where uh, you can just easily write the money off. Anyway, um, so I start looking at it. It turns out that they've actually got the data sheet for the camera on... You know, you're not the data sheet, it, it's the actual sort of service history of the camera on the website, um, on eBay. And it lists the previous owner as, it's an aerospace satellite manufacturer. So, you know, for them, a camera like this is yeah, sort of root, routine lab purchases type thing. Um, yeah, not something they just get rid of, but it's, it's the sort of thing that... Um, yeah, for them, 15,000 bucks wouldn't be a great loss. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that kind of checks out, you know, that um, it did actually on the, on, the, on, the, on the camera service history. And I call up the manufacturers of the camera and they confirm what it says on eBay that when the camera was last serviced um, on such and such a date, that it was fully functional and an absolute clean bill of health. So yeah, now this is starting to look fairly promising. 
And lastly, the company that was actually selling it on eBay, they basically just sell on lab equipment. So, and again, they've, they've been doing this for 15 years and they got a you know, 100% rating on eBay. So, but it still says sold a scene and no re re returns. So, mm, in principle, the camera, if, if it works, it's, it's, it's a bark that would save you at least $10,000 over buying it new. Uh, or something that will do something comparable new. So, you know, they do the refurbished cameras, or there, is, there are some cheaper versions that you can get in, in Europe that are, again, they're about $25,000, $30,000 that'll do this, you know, 10,000, 10, 20,000 frames um, at about 500 lines of resolution. So, yeah, now you come down to the calculated gamble, which is... Yeah, there's, the, there's what works on paper and there's what works in practice. But anyway, that there is actually genuinely silver. Silver, it turns out, is actually not that expensive. It's about 50 cents per gram. So there's four grams there. That's about $2 worth. Um, now, if I was selling this on eBay for $1, basically half the price, then even if 50% of the time it was complete crap, it would still be worth buying yeah, you would still be at the break-even point because you're only on average paying two dollars uh, per. Um, yeah, you're still only paying fifty percent per gram on average. So those are the things you need to know: is what's it actually worth, or what's it worth to you, and what's the probability that it's actually real. And it yeah, looks out like that. This is um, a, a kind of a no-brainer in that it's being, <laughs> the camera's got a clean bill of health the last time it was seen working. Uh, it's being sold on from a satellite company to a, 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 a reseller with a long history, long and favourable sort of history. What's the probability uh, that it's not actually working? Um, and yeah, so if it is working, it's, it's probably about $10,000, almost half the price, you know. So yeah, it looked at it like that, you know, it, it would have to have about a 50% chance of working to not be worth the, the, the gamble. But the thing is here, that you're not doing this 100 times and taking the average, you're doing it once on value on amounts of money that you can't easily um, that you've got to take seriously um, so yeah uh, the camera is in the post it's um, and if it works then you're gonna get some absolutely top-notch high-speed videos on this channel so something to look forward to on top of actually been doing a load of stuff with the next door well uh, with the thermal camera um, so, fingers crossed, um, and if you've got any, any suggestions on whether this was an act of supreme stupidity or a sensible calculated risk, yeah, yeah. let me know, let me know down in the comments below. Um, actually, for a little bonus, let me just show you what I got on my table here, because, uh, that's good, a little fun. Let's come down here. Is that about right? Come a little closer. There we go. So, um, as you can see, I've now got quite a lot of these uh, these little laser ball things. And I've got green and blue ones now. And you can do some even more fun stuff with the green and blue ones. So the blue ones do actually sort of glow a bit blue. Green ones go glow green. And they're really cool. These, yes, yeah, they're only like three bucks a piece or something. They're really fun. And you do some really cool stuff with them with the LEDs, which I'll, I'll do a fun little video on sometime. And you'll notice that there are lots of metal bars here. But I've got a superb number of elements on this desk. So here we have carbon, that's graphite. Um, 
and that's a nickel rod, a zinc rod, and a copper rod. Someone, there was one of these uh, bogus Kickstarter things that said they were making, um, what was it? It was a salt water powered uh, flashlight that didn't need batteries, and it was just one of the dumbest ideas I've ever seen. Anyway, so that's that's why I need the zinc and the copper rod. Also, it worked out these are uh, quite useful for um, demonstrating a problem called emissivity with infrared cameras. And that's why you need the silver there as well. So silver is an absolute superb conductor of heat. But if you look at it under a thermal camera, you can't see it at all. And that's a problem called emissivity. So things like carbon are, are great. Yeah, they, they, they always they show up well on infrared cameras. Silver, not so. Anyway, I'll... And that, just so you know, that's the most ex yes, that's the most expensive thing on this table. That's actually let's see if it'll focus. Whatever, go on, focus on that bastard. Yeah, so that is actually gold. There's five grams of gold there, um, and gold's about fifty dollars a gram. So it's about two hundred and fifty dollars of gold there. Um, yeah, the silver, by comparison, that's about $2 of silver. The silver is, is comparatively cheap. But again, they have interesting infrared properties. Um, and that is, this is some stuff I've been working on. That's D2O, um, heavy water, which is about a dollar per gram. So, <laughs> crazily enough, the actual water costs more per gram than the, the silver. And then I have my little optical windows, which is going to do something with... What is I going to do something with? Global warming, that's right. So, what have we got? Somewhere in here, I have something cool. That's glass. So, you make optical windows out of all... Ah, all sorts of things. And this one is beautiful. So this is a sapphire optical window, which is it's quite clear. Um, anyway, the sapphire, if I remember rightly, they make the one of the iPhones. They have sapphire screens on them. But the, all of these things have interesting uh, optical properties and what they let through and what they don't. And the one that I'm actually after in here is a germanium window. It's also an element, so we've got yeah, really quite a lot of elements on this on this table. Germanium, there we go. And the thing you'll notice about germanium is first of all, it's beautiful. So there we go. <laughs> That's what you look like. So it looks very shiny, very mirror-like, very non-see-through. But the thing is, it's actually an optical window in the infrared. Um, and so they actually made the lenses for infrared cameras out of this stuff. Um, yeah, and you do some quite interesting demonstrations about global warming, which I will get to sometime. Uh, so yeah, that's just some fun stuff from my desk.